Welcome to the Camp Echo 2022 Cascades information video. We're so excited to be sending you on Cascades this summer. I'm Kat Stein, the summer's Adventure Trips Unit Leader, and I'm so excited to take you through this information today. So what will we be covering in this video? We're going to be covering all of the spe specific information you need to know about Cascades regarding the itinerary, the gear you should be bringing, and uh, how you can prepare. We will not be going over the programmatic goals or overview of the Adventure Trip program. We will not be going over COVID procedures or emergency procedures. Please, please go and watch the Adventure Trips overview video and the COVID procedures video to learn that information. Take a minute now to pause this video and go watch the Adventure Trips overview video and the COVID procedures video so that you have all the necessary information before watching this one. Awesome. Now that you've gone and watched those other videos, let's get into the specifics of the Cascades backpacking trip. So where even are the Cascades? The Cascades are about three hours north of Seattle in the beautiful Cascade Mountains. It's a beautiful piece of wilderness and we're so excited to be able to send campers there again after not for a couple of years due to COVID. So you're going backpacking. Now what? How do you prepare? What do you need to know? So first off, let's talk about who's going to be on your trip. You're going to have two staff members who are 21 plus and who are wilderness first responders, and they may also be lifeguards. They've undergone a lot of staff training to make sure that, you, that they're as prepared as possible to take you into the woods to have a safe and rewarding time. Who are your fellow campers going to be? Well, there are going to be eight participants on each session of Cascades, and it is a single gender trip. They may have a lot of Camp Echo experience, or it may be their first trip ever. Either way, Cascades give us, gives us a wonderful opportunity to learn from and grow with each other. So what does your time on camp look like? What does the layout of your session look like? Well, Sunday you'll arrive at camp and you'll spend Sunday and Monday doing your normal first day of camp things. You'll take your swim eval, you'll check in at the clinic, and you'll be, participate in the big talk with the rest of the Camp Echo community. You'll also spend time preparing for your trip, designing and packing out your menu, having conversations about how to be safe and hygienic in the backcountry, packing out your group gear and personal gear as well so that everyone feels confident, prepared, and safe going into the woods. Then Tuesday morning, you'll wake up bright and early and get and drive to Grand Rapids where you'll, where you'll catch a plane from Grand Rapids to Chicago and then Chicago to Seattle. You'll land in Seattle in the early afternoon and you'll stop in the city proper to pick up some, odds, some last minute odds and ends like fuel, which you can't bring on planes. You'll then drive the rest of the way up to the Cascade Mountains and you'll camp in a car camping site near the wilderness Tuesday night. Wednesday, you'll hit the trail and you'll hike Wednesday to Wednesday, experiencing all the beautiful vistas of the Cascade Mountains. Wednesday, you'll hike out and you'll stay at that same car camping site as Tuesday night before driving back to Seattle Thursday morning. Once in Seattle, you'll check into the hotel, clean yourselves and clean your gear and spend some time exploring the city and having a celebratory dinner to, to acknowledge all of your great accomplishments of the last week. Then you'll hit the hay early so that you can be up bright and early to catch your flight back to Chicago. Cascades campers land at Chicago Midway Airport at 11 a.m. and their adults should be there waiting to pick them up and bring them home. So let's get into a little bit more details about the kind of things you'll be talking about while on site at Camp Echo, namely the three P's talk. This is what we call our conversation on site where we talk about peeing, pooping, and periods in the woods. Of course, your guides while on site will get into this with you in much greater detail. But I did wanna highlight for you guys that because the Cascades Wilderness is a national park, every single campsite will have a covered outhouse pit toilet. So you'll get some creature comforts even in the remote wilderness. The menu, like I mentioned earlier, is designed and packed out by you all with the utmost priority on allergies and dietary needs so that everyone can be safe, fed and fueled for their adventure. Communication with Cascades um, campers is difficult. While they can receive mail and bunk notes while on site Sunday and Monday, they're gonna be spending the vast majority of their trip out of reach. However, their staff will be having regular check-ins over the satellite phone with Camp Echo so that we can make sure the group is staying safe, being healthy, and giving, um, getting regular weather updates. Should any emergency communication occur, um, all that communication will be coordinated by the staff on site at Camp Echo. So how are you gonna prepare for the Cascades? Well, first off, make sure everything you're bringing 
is warm, comfortable, quick drying, and of a synthetic material. We don't want to bring any cotton sweats because those are going to not hold warmth well if they get wet. And remember, it can be very rainy up in the Pacific Northwest. Make sure you're prioritizing function over fashion. And remember, it's nice to look a little silly in the woods. It's even cool. For Cascades, you should be thinking about bringing two pairs of shoes. Make sure you're bringing those hiking boots to support all those miles you're going to be walking. Your hiking boots should be waterproof, thick soled, and have good ankle support. And you should also bring a pair of campsite shoes to wear when you're not hiking. These can be Chacos, Keens, Tevas, Crocs, any sandal that's comfortable to you and stays securely on your foot. Please avoid bringing flip-flops and slides as these don't stay securely on your foot and can increase your risk of getting a foot injury like a cut or a bruise. We want to make sure we're protecting our feet at all time as they've got to get you a lot of miles from the start to the end of your trip. This summer, we're also encouraging all of our campers to bring lightweight hiking pants as a form of bug protection. These should be synthetic, lightweight, and loose fitting so that they pull the fabric away from your legs. By pulling the fabric away from your legs, they make it harder for bugs to bite through the fabric and into you. So it's a nice step between your hiking shorts and your rain gear to keep you comfortable and moving all day long. Please avoid bringing jeans or cotton sweats as hiking pants. Also make sure that every camper going on Cascades backpacking has a 65 liter hiking backpack. It's really important that this is a hiking backpack and has a hip strap to relieve the load on your shoulders and channel some of that weight from your hips down into your feet and then finally into the ground. The Adventure Trips program is really excited that this summer we can lend anyone who requests one a 65 liter hiking backpack, but make sure to request one on your Adventure Trips preparation and gear form in your Camp and Touch account so we know who to expect is borrowing. I'm also really excited to remind you all that Gearhead, formerly Uncle Dan's Outfitters, has committed to a 10% discount on everything at their store for Camp Echo families. Simply mention that you're a Camp Echo family at checkout and they'll know exactly what to do. Gearhead has also been working with us for many summers now, and they're really aware of the gear needs of the Camp Echo program. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them for their advice, and they'll definitely have some expert perspective to provide. How will you physically prepare for your trip? Well, we highly recommend that you do. Try to exercise at least 60 minutes every day in preparation of your trip. Try going for a run, swimming some laps, riding your bike, or even going for a loaded practice hike. If you've got a backpack at home, try filling it with some bags of rice and some gear that you think you might be bringing on trail and hike around your neighborhood. This will give you a sense of what it might feel like and give you the opportunity to notice how your backpack fits, how you might want to adjust it to fit better, and how your boots fit. When you're hiking in your boots, even without a loaded pack, try and notice where your boots might be rubbing against your feet. These can cause hot spots and eventually blisters, and to be proactively aware of them reduces the chance of getting blisters on trail. Some last minute odds and ends is make sure you leave your cell phone at home. Campers are not allowed to have, have cell phones on site or on trail, and so it's for your peace of mind that we ask you to leave them at home, and then you don't have to worry about losing or misplacing them while at camp. Trippers can't really receive mail while they are on site for the first day or so. It's a very small window to receive mail and they won't be able to receive mail or bunk notes while on trail. If you take a medication and you anticipate continuing that medication while on trail, please check in those meds ahead of time with Camp Echo staff. We'll have a couple of medication drop-off times ahead of the bus departures and on the day of bus departures. When checking in your meds, make sure that you're including thorough instructions of how and when you take them so that we can make sure that your routine with your medication is not disrupted while at camp. And remember, all Camp Echo trip costs are covered by Camp Echo. There's no need to bring cash, debit cards, or credit cards on trail because we will provide all meals, snacks, drinks, and even a souvenir of the trip. Um, also, please remember to bring a photo ID for airport security. It can be a driver's license, a state ID, or even just a student ID. Anything to make sure that you can get on that plane. Isn't the, aren't the Cascades breathtaking? They're even better in person. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me at katherines at magawymca.org or give us a call at 847-475-7400, extension 259. And be sure to follow us on social media for regular updates throughout the summer. Thanks so much, and we're excited to have you on the peninsula.